Hello there, today I'm in Jing Mai Mountain and we're in early autumn and this is the second day we're making tea today. So this is a batch of gusu, there's uh, about 10 kg of gusu of uh, ancient tea in that, uh, in that basket and we're going to process it. So you can see that we're in the morning now. Originally I wanted to process this tea yesterday evening, but uh, in the afternoon we had rain. It's been sunny so far, so it was quite nice. And we, we got a heavy shower uh, in the afternoon yesterday, and that cooled down the, the temperature. And the effect is that if you have lower temperature, your weathering will be much slower especially if the air is uh, is more humid due to the rain so then I decided to to wait until the next day to process this tea because as you know if there's not enough withering you will have more stringency in the tea and it will be it will just be hard to to cook without burning because the leaves are are quite swollen and the purpose of withering is to let the, leaf, let the leaves uh, loosen and become a bit more flexible. Okay, so I kind of... I left the, the walk for a bit too long now, so when I put the leaves in, I think we were at like 340 degrees Celsius, which is a bit high, so I need to keep flipping those leaves quite fast. Note that the initial temperature is not so important because very quickly as water evaporates uh, the temperature uh, stabilizes to a lower well to a lower amount. You can imagine this because of heat transfers but I don't want to go into too much detail today about this. I already made a video about the physics of, uh, of that uh, cooking. So today I'd like to talk a bit about the, the difference between autumn and spring tea because most of the times I well we hear about spring tea and I take a lot of pictures and videos when it's spring and a bit less so during autumn. So here is the opportunity to equalize a bit. I think autumn tea is a bit of a it's a bit of a forgotten season or something like that because, uh, well, there's, you can have really good tea, really fine tea in autumn, but usually uh, people, hold, uh, people hold spring in higher esteem than uh, autumn. And, well, while uh, I would agree overall, you know, I think it's still a shame because you can really have great tea in autumn Especially if you like aromatic teas, I found that uh, autumn tea always has a, a special fragrance that spring tea uh, doesn't have. Of course, you have fragrance in spring tea, but it, it is an, of another nature, I would say. It's quite hard for me to, to describe uh, the fragrances, really, because I think if I tell you it's flowery or fruity, I think actually it doesn't help much and I think I, I want to drop the, the fragrance description overall because uh, it doesn't provide much information, I think fragrance has to be experienced but if you compare side by side uh, an autumn tea with a spring tea of the same area especially if they are quite new, you will notice a major difference in fragrance not so much in terms of power than in terms of character of nature. Now, of course, um, autumn tea tends to be um, a bit weaker than spring tea. And this is because, well, uh, autumn tea is the end of the line for the, for the tea, for the tea tree. It's the end of that marathon 
that it has to do every year. Okay, it's been producing leaves uh, for maybe eight months, six to eight months so far. Let's say it starts producing tea in February or March, and now we're in September, so of course uh, you've had may maybe four to six splashes already in Jingmai. If you were in a more intensive plantation, you could have over 10, 10 flushes. So it means that the, the tea trees would have sprouted leaves over 10 times. And so that, that has an impact. I guess it's just a part of the, the genetics too, like the, the, tea, the tea trees programmed to put different chemicals in the leaves depending on the stage of the year. Probably as a strategy to um, protect against insects. So, um, yeah, th there's one line of thinking that says like, autumn tea is weaker um, because it's the end of the season and the tea tree is a bit tired. And there's a lot, another line of thinking that says uh, it, it's entirely genetic. Uh, the, the tea tree is programmed to release different, to produce different flavors at different seasons. And this is in order to protect from different insects along the year. Uh, maybe I will, I will cover this, uh, this dif different theories in more detail in a future video. But while you're having tea, you can ask yourself why does this, why does the tea has a, um, why does it have a fragrance like this? And why is it so different? Depending on the season, depending on the, the areas of production, even depending on the years. Okay, so now I'd like to talk more about the difference between spring and autumn from a practical standpoint. As a, as a tea producer. So first you have much less tea to, to make during uh, the autumn season. The, the flushes are much more uh, separated than during the spring. It, it could be due to some kind of, uh, again, some kind of genetic programming that makes all the spring tea sprout at the same time, only separated by, by a, a, gra a gradient of altitude and maybe tree age, but within like a, a two weeks time frame, uh, all of your tea trees will have sprouted in early spring. So you get this sudden, uh, well, you, you get the, these sudden waves of, of tea leaves, of fresh tea leaves to process, and it can be, um, well, it can, can kind of uh, strand the, um, our production facilities, because early spring is usually the only time when you operate at maximum uh, capability in your processing unit. Now in autumn it's a bit different. You also have some waves but they seem to be uh, a bit more random. Uh, it could be due to the, the time that happens. Maybe they, they start well metered. You know the tea trees start well metered at the beginning of the season, of the growing season. and and then you could you could imagine that like let's say you're in a race at the beginning of the race like all the cars are together and the more time uh, the more time goes and the more they are separated depending on other factors and this could be the case for the tea trees you know they they are maybe not regulated all throughout the season and this is why well at the second flush you will have a bit more distance depending on the tea gardens and the third flush even more distance and in the end yeah I would say uh, it really depends on the gardens now mm, but we, we get a much more uh, how to say that in autumn we can say that we can process a little bit of tea mm, all throughout the, the two months of the autumn season while in spring that will be more 
like two waves of uh, in intense work and not much between each wave, okay? Now also, while in spring we're going from, we're, if you start spring early, you will start uh, very slow, like you won't have a lot of tea, and then the tea will sprout suddenly, and then of course you, you'll have more and more work until the rain comes, at which point you can consider it like late, late spring tea, and quality will be different. So usually in spring you go from, um, you, you go from less work to more work as the, as the season goes and it's kind of the opposite for autumn tea because most of the tea will sprout in September and then the, the, sprout, the sprouting rate, the way that the tea trees sprout everywhere in Jing Mai, well it kind of slows down as we approach the winter as the temperatures get lower. So. You'll have most of the, the autumn tea produced in, in September and early October. And then in late October and November, you'll get just a little bit. And the more you go, the more you'll have Huang Pian, the more you'll have yellow flakes in the tea because uh, it's probably related to temperature and again growth, the, the genetics and growth cycle. In, in autumn, the leaves, they, they grow older on the tea trees, like when they grow, they, they seem already mature. They are not like the, the spring leaves where um, during spring, like it's like you have babies growing everywhere, like they're very tender and they remain tender for many days. While in autumn, um, yeah, it seems that as they grow, they, they look already thicker and rougher than, uh, than in spring. And here comes my, my point, it, it comes to processing, that the processing in autumn is different from the processing in spring. Mm, I would say spring tea is the easiest to, to process. I'm talking about poor tea huh, for the, the Sha Ting. Mm, spring tea is easier to process because it's very forgivable, like you get plenty of water in the leaves and they are very tender, they won't burn easily, mm, you won't get that many yellow flakes and so you have more, you have a larger margin of error compared to autumn tea. Now in autumn tea, it really depends. Sometimes they have a lot of water in, inside and, at, and sometimes they don't have water at all. You have a, a larger diversity, I would say, of leaves. And I would say most of the time when you make good autumn tea, uh, they tend to lack of water. And it means that you need to save the water in the leaves. How do you save the water? You, you don't let it evaporate. If I do like this, you can see all that water flying away. Now if I make a ball, like this, then I try to conserve the steam inside the tea leaves so that they keep cooking the tea. Okay, if I lose too much water, I will have to stop the, the shatching, otherwise my leaves will burn. But if I stop too early, of course, my leaves won't be cooked. So, uh, well, if I, if I lack of water, I don't have a choice. I have to take to, to remove the leaves and my leaves will turn red because they won't be cooked enough. So I have to save a lot of water in the, in the tea leaves, during, especially during the autumn, when you have those very mature leaves with, uh, with few water in it. Now the problem is, the more you cook, the, the more you cook your leaves in autumn, the more Huang Pian you get, the more yellow flakes you get. Okay, because yellow flakes, they are produced when um, you could say they are produced when all of the water, when most of the water is extracted from the leaves and it turns into a kind of popcorn or something like that. The, um, the structure of the leaf changes and it's kind of fried or something. Now of course the, the longer you cook the tea in autumn, uh, the more Huang Pian you will get. So um, 
many people in order to avoid having too much uh, yellow flakes in their in their tea they will cook it less than in spring and it will turn into a, a redder tea because the shatching there won't be enough shatching to deactivate the enzymes and that's why a lot of the autumn tea that you will get will be a bit redder than will be redder than in spring i think it's mostly related to a choice made by the farmer to limit the amount of uh, yellow flakes he gets because of course well the leaves are cheaper the fresh leaves are, are cheaper in autumn but you get a lot more uh, yellow flakes to sort like in a, in a typical gusu batch like this we'll get about half uh, half of the weight of that tea will have to be sorted out because it's yellow flakes and we'll have to sell it separately so of course you have to take this into account when uh, you price your teas and so of course to to save to, to kind of save on some uh, losses by, by Huang Ken uh, it can be it can be worth it for the farmers to um, to process the tea a bit less to have less Huang Ken and therefore um, make more money on the tea but it will also give a different quality a, a more a redder tea redder tea can be good I think for uh, young tea uh, some people actually prefer red and young tea and it's also a style a style that is made made like consciously and by the farmers because that's what their customers want but I would say um, for the long-term storage and to keep the overall power in the tea, you know, the good bites you get and the hui gan and the sweetness and everything, I think it's still better to, to process it uh, more on the green side, well, I mean, to, to process it li like it should be. I think that this tea is quite pleasant to process, there's, there's enough water in, inside and uh, yeah, well, we, we haven't, we, we've been back for less than a week in Jing Mai and, and there's, there are a few festivals these days. It's the time of the year when uh, people do offerings to Buddha. So basically they throw a huge party in their home and invite the whole village and it's like a, a splurge for Buddha. So uh, people are quite busy doing all this stuff. So we don't have that much tea available right now. But I hope uh, next week we'll be able to produce more. Uh, today I only have uh, two batches to process, so it's quite easy work. And so I process this tea in the morning because of that uh, withering issue. And also, usually if you process on, this, on the second day in the morning, you will get a slightly less astringent tea. So for autumn tea, uh, I would say I prefer to process in the morning generally. And most of the time I would say I don't have a choice because the, there's not enough withering in the evening because of temperatures. So now it's been about 15 minutes that I've started this batch. And um, well, you can see it's turning very nice so autumn tea is more yellow than spring tea you won't really have that dark green color in uh, autumn tea when it grows it's more yellowish and actually it can be much harder to make the difference between between um, oh, ancient tea trees and uh, and young trees between Gusu and Shanghai during the autumn when you're buying the fresh leaves they they look almost identical while in spring there's a, a stark contrast but um, it's okay because we're working with uh, people we, we trust you know relatives and things and anyway uh, I like to have a have a tour in the gardens during the day and see what's going on so these leaves come from Aiban you can see that on farm leaf we were re we've released uh, we've released two cakes actually that come from my ban there's one called Jingmai Ai Ban and another is the Jingmai single tree it's made of the big trees of uh, of Ai Ban garden so it's a garden that uh, I like very much there's great great vibe there and a lot of big trees 
uh, large biodiversity and so yeah two days ago I just uh, went there and, and saw that their their trees had sprouted and so yesterday I, I I could get the leaves that was pretty nice of them so now I have um, put up the, the fire I've put out most of the fire and uh, we're having a slow a slow ending to this session in autumn I like to give it a longer time than in spring mm, it's not a problem I think in autumn to go almost 30 minutes maybe 25 and usually in spring I do 20 minutes per batch but in autumn I will do maybe 25 to 30 minutes of course it depends on how much tea you put things like that but what matters most is uh, looking at the leaves touching the leaves you can feel even through the gloves I can feel the the moisture in the in the leaves and so I think they can go a bit more and when you listen to this when you listen to this pitch like the the sound of the um, of the leaves against the walk you can hear a different pitch it's a higher and higher pitch as the tea gets dry and that's also a hint mm, you can use this as a reference to, to feel to get a feel of how dry your tea is so I will finish the processing this batch slowly I think we still we, we can still give it at least five minutes on low fire and um, I will leave you here and stay with my tea leaves take good care of them I hope you're you're nice and safe at home and having great tea and see you later for another video Bye-bye.